Hello, today we're going to talk about reactivity 2.1.1, and this one is all about chemical equations. All right, so stoichiometry is where we can use the coefficients from a balanced chemical equation to de determine amounts of reactants or products in a particular chemical reaction. Um, an example would be something like if I have water decomposing into oxygen and um, hydrogen, I can use that two and the imaginary one and the two, those are the coefficients. I can tell that the um, water is used up in the same ratio that hydrogen gas is produced, but you have um, half as much oxygen gas produced as you do hydrogen gas. Um, so we're gonna look at that today. We're gonna look at a couple different examples, um, but the first thing that we want to really get into is the um, chemical reactions and the actual writing of the equations themselves. Okay, so let's talk chemical equations. You always put reactants on the left, products on the right. A reversible reaction will have two arrows. Um, I've seen some people use full arrows like this. Some people use the half arrow. That doesn't really matter. Um, but if it's reversible, you'll see this double arrow. Um, so reactants on the left, products on the right. We use coefficients to balance the equation, and we use state symbols to indicate the state of matter that is present. So we will use S for solid, L for liquid, G for gas, and AQ for aqueous solutions. Okay, so all reactions have to be balanced in order to satisfy the law of conservation of mass. Um, so let's look at that example from earlier. If I had water decomposing into oxygen and hydrogen gas, um, I have two hydrogen atoms on my reactant side and two on my product side. But I have only one oxygen on the reactant side and two oxygens on the product side. I can't just create an oxygen out of nothing. Um, so I'm going to write this one out so you can see it, um, but eventually, hopefully, you'll just do this in your head. You can see that I need to increase the amount of oxygens. The only way to change the amount is by putting a coefficient. I need to multiply my oxygens by two, but the only place to put it is out here in the front. So that's going to change both the amount of hydrogens and the amount of oxygens. So I need to make the hydrogens match now, and in order to do that, I need to multiply the hydrogens by two on the product side which changes it to four and gets it balanced. Let's look at another example. Let's say I react hydrogen gas with nitrogen gas to form ammonia. Okay, and again, I'm gonna write it out so you can see, but you can do this in your head once you get used to it. Hydrogen, nitrogen, two hydrogens, two nitrogens, three hydrogens, uh, one nitrogen right now. When you see there's a two and a three, you go for the least common multiple, which is six. So I can multiply this side by three to give us six. And I can multiply the other side by two, and that's going to change the hydrogens to six and my nitrogens to two. And now everything is balanced. And so that's kind of your strategy. Um, I wanna show you one more thing with um, polyatomic ions. So let's do a, a kind of longer example. If I have something like copper two nitrate and sodium phosphate. They react to form copper phosphate, copper tube phosphate and sodium nitrate. When you have polyatomic ions like this, it's much easier to just count them as a single entity because that's kind of how they're behaving anyway. So, I have one copper here, but three coppers here. I'm not gonna write out each ion this time, I'm just gonna walk you through it. So I need to put a three in front to make the coppers match. Now, I have three times two makes six. I have six nitrates on this side. I only have one nitrate over here, so I need to use the coefficient of six in front. So now I have the same number of nitrates on both sides. 
Now let's look at sodium. I have three sodiums, six sodiums. So I, in order to make that match, I need to multiply this side by two. Six sodiums, six sodiums, now it matches. And lastly, I've got two of my phosphate ions, two of my phosphate ions. And so now this reaction is balanced and much easier than going atom by atom when you have polyatomic ions that retain their identity on both sides. Um, I thought it would be worth our time to review just a few basic patterns of reactivity. Um, we're going to go through a lot of different types of reactions throughout the course, but um, some very general ones are things like um, synthesis reactions. That would be something like the example I used before with three hydrogens and um, nitrogen forming two ammonias. So you have two separate things combining to form a single product, synthesis. Another pattern would be decomposition, where you have something like water um, decomposing to oxygen and hydrogen gas. Um, you could have something like combustion. Combustion is when it reacts with oxygen. So let's say we have um, like CH4 reacting with oxygen gas. When you have a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen, it always forms carbon dioxide and water for complete combustion. And don't forget to balance that. Um, another type would be single replacement or single displacement, some people call it. That would be where you have like an element by itself reacting with an element in a compound. And the element by itself um, switches places with the same type of element in the compound. Um, and then should balance. Um, and then the last type would be double replacement. Um, so something where you have, like, you have two compounds. Um, so let's say I have... Let's do lead instead. And then the first two elements are going to swap partners. Like that. So that would be a double replacement reaction. Now these are some just general patterns. We're also going to go through different types of reactions like redox reactions and acid base reactions and then like gas producing reactions. Um, but this should get us started on some different like patterns of things that you're going to see for chemical equations. Okay, um, so for this example, we need to write an equation for the decomposition of sodium hydrogen carbonate into sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. Um, so we have NaHCO3 is breaking down into sodium carbonate water and carbon dioxide. Um, now at, there we go. We always need to make sure that the reaction is balanced. So if I have one sodium, two sodiums, I need to put a two there. Now I have two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two carbons, one, two carbons. And I have six oxygens total. There's three here, one here, two here. That adds up to six total. So now my reaction is balanced, and there's my balanced chemical equation. For this example, it says to write a balanced chemical equation for the combustion of a magnesium strip, so solid magnesium, and oxygen gas to form magnesium oxide powder, MgO. And it's a powder, so it's a solid. And then you would need to balance, there's two oxygens, so you would have two, and then two magnesiums. Okay, so here's a couple more balancing um, examples. I'm going to rewrite it so I have more space. Now I have four carbons in my hydrocarbon there. This is a combustion reaction. So I'm going to put a four to balance the carbons. Then I have a 10 for the hydrogens, so I could put a five here. Now the problem with this, let's see. If I count up my oxygens on this side, I have eight here plus five here, that's 13 total. 
Well, I don't have a way to divide that by two evenly. You could put 13 over two, but most of the time you need whole number ratios. So a way to get around that is then you put a two in front of here. Now I have eight carbons, 20 hydrogens, and now my oxygens are sitting at um, 26. 16 plus 10 is 26. Well, 26 is divisible by two, and that gives us the 13. And so now we have whole number coefficients for our balanced reaction. For our second example here, we've got our ammonia and oxygen forming NO and H2O. If I look at the hydrogens, I have a three and a two. The least common multiple of three and two is six. So I need to multiply to get those both equal to six. Now I have two nitrogens, two nitrogens, I just did hydrogen. I have two oxygens on this side. On this side total, I have two plus three. That gives us five, which again is not divisible by two evenly. So if I want whole number ratios, I can multiply everything by two. So I would have four NH3 plus five oxygen gives me four NO plus six H2O. So that way we have 10 oxygens and four plus six is 10 oxygens on the products and everything is balanced this way. Now this links to reactivity 3.2. When is it useful to use half equations? We can use half equations um, for redox reactions. Redox reactions always have a portion where it is losing electrons, which is oxidation, and a portion that is gaining electrons, which is reduction. So we can isolate the losing and the gaining into two separate half equations or you can put them together to get your overall balanced chemical equation.